Good morning. morning. Want to welcome you this morning. So glad to see you. And we would like to have a record of your presence this morning. If you would take your attendance pads and sign them and pass them, we'd appreciate it so much. We want to welcome those of you who are joining us at home uh, via YouTube online. Thank you for worshiping with us. And we'd encourage you to hit the like button, hit the share button, and send the link of our service to your neighbors and friends, and tell them they're also welcome to join us here on Sunday morning at 1045. Want to begin this morning, if uh, Sarah, if you will stand up, we have a new addition to our staff, Sarah Jones, who's helping with our audiovisual department. Please welcome her. She also has a cute little four-year-old. Uh, running around named Henry, not running around, he's in the nursery now, but you will see see her with him, so he belongs to her, and we're glad to have both of you as a part of our ministry team. Do we have any specific announcements this morning? This is, this this may be a first. We need to get, we need to get this documented. That we're, okay, okay, I, let me risk There we go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, Faith Links is doing a video series right now called When Ch- Christians Get It Wrong. Each piece is a freestanding lesson. There's not any homework, uh, and it's Adam Hamilton. So if you'd like to join us just for a day or to, um, if you have a Sunday school class, we start at 930-ish. Uh, Chris is always there early to put the coffee on. And we have donuts, so come and, and celebrate with us any Sunday morning. Okay, thank you. I uh, do uh, want to let the congregation know, and many of you do know, of the passing of uh, Dale Eden. Uh, Judy James' father passed away this last week. The service of memorial for Mr. Eden will not be this Tuesday. It will be a week from Tuesday at 1030 here at the church. So uh, you might put that on your calendar. Not seeing Sherry. Do you have any announcements? Okay, we're fine. So, Cave, if you'll come up, we want to welcome you all to worship on this blessed day, uh, which is the fourth Sunday of Easter tide, and it's also Mother's Day. So, thank you for being with us today. Would you please stand for the spirit of worship? Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. Forever will we praise your glorious name.
standing as we share in our prayer of confession and praise. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed our one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Would you extend a greeting of peace and welcome one to the other? God's peace to you all. Okay, we'll invite everybody to be seated and our praise team will lead us in a song of praise. Mic check. We have done this one before, so I need you to sing loud.
of the goodness of God. Please. Please join with me in a word of prayer. O oh God, all our lives you have been so faithful. All of our lives you have been so, so good. Lord, open to us now our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture today is from 1 John chapter 3. Those of you who are able, please stand and Kate will come and read our passage for us. This is 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will, will be has not been made known. But we know that when, that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have, have his hope in him purify themselves just as he purifies us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, praise team, and thank you, choir, for the beautiful music. Appreciate it so much. Continue in kind of the theme of lives being transformed. You know, over time, people change. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had what was supposed to be our 50th year class reunion for Nathan Hale. It turned out to be our 52nd year class reunion because we had to postpone it for a couple of years. But uh, many surprises were to be found in that 52nd year reunion. 
People sometimes just change. People in the class who we thought were destined for stardom and greatness and fame uh, have struggled in life. Some of the people who uh, we weren't sure they were going to make it out of high school are today very prominent citizens and uh, very successful and, and contribute greatly to, to the communities in which they live. Uh, in many cases, people's personalities have changed. They obviously changed physically. I mean, that was kind of interesting. Some of the people would come up and say, Hey, Alan, how are you doing? And I'm looking them at the face going, Who in the world is this? I'm so glad they have those little name tags, you know, uh, with the picture from high school. Oh, yeah, Debbie, uh, good to see you again. I wouldn't forget your face anywhere, you know. But, uh, <laughs> Is amazing. I think I was the only one in my whole class that hadn't aged a bit, so it, it was really something. But over the course of time, people change, and that's true of the people of the Bible as well. This morning, I'm going to use as my reflection a person by the name of John, the son of Zebedee. He was a fisherman. He was one of the twelve. He was one of the brothers of James. He was a part of the inner three of Jesus' disciples. He had a special relationship with Christ. He was with Jesus at the raising of Lazarus' daughter. He was with Jesus at the transfiguration. He and Peter uh, were selected to prepare the Last Supper, and he was entrusted to care for Jesus' mother. He had a special relationship with Christ. But John also had kind of a problem. He had a nickname, which was Son of Thunder, and he was nicknamed that because he kind of had an anger temperament problem, is the way we would describe that today. He was the one that came storming to Jesus on one occasion about a man who was healing in his name. He was the one who was upset with the lack of hospitality of the Samaritans when they tried to pass through that region. Uh, he was the one who wanted to argue over who could be the greatest in the kingdom, and his mother came and petitioned uh, for him a seat in the kingdom. And so then uh, you get to wondering, <laughs> I wonder how much his mother was uh, possibly uh, promoting this problem with her insistence on his being raised to a position in the kingdom. We don't really know. But John was one, when you read the whole story, whose life was truly transformed by the risen Christ. When we come to the end of his life, it's a story not of anger, but a story of compassion and love. When you read the gospel, which he wrote, when you read the epistles, which he wrote, the prominent theme is the theme of what it really means to love one another. How did this one who was so volatile, so angry, so filled with vitriol at times and, and anger, how did this one come to the point that he could write consistently what it means to be a disciple of love. He was transformed by the resurrection power of Christ. And it causes us, I think, to ask the question, what enables us to let go of troubling traits? And we all have them. We all have aspects of our personality that are annoying or displeasing or we wish somehow we could get a hold of. How can our personalities be transformed? And the answer is by the resurrection power of Christ's love. Look at this passage in John chapter 3. There are several things, I think, that are important for us to realize. And the first is that God's love, and here is the word, has been lavished upon us. That is an interesting word. Look at verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. What an interesting word. Not just given to us, not just shown to us, not just bestowed to us, not just imparted to us, but lavished. What word comes to your mind when you think of that word? A lavishing kind of love. A love that is complete and whole and just lavished on us, poured out upon us. And this is the way in which God loves us. Do we realize the depth and how much God has lavished his love upon us? I was visiting with a lady the other day, her granddaughter uh, just had their first child and she was giving me the report. I said, well, how's your granddaughter and the new baby doing? And she said, they're doing great, although I don't think that baby's ever going to learn to walk. 
And I said, really? And she said, no, someone's always holding it. They just pass this baby from one person to another, from the mother to a, an aunt to a grandmother uh, to, uh, you know, an older sibling. And I don't know if this baby will ever learn to walk. Someone is holding that baby all the time. Someone is pouring out their love on that baby. That baby, thank God, is being lavished in the love of that family. And that's how much God loves us. He wants us to learn how to walk, but He never lets us go. He never sets us down. He never puts us out on our own. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. His love is lavished upon us. He is always there for us. Uh, Paul said it in a little different way. He said, I am convinced that neither height nor depth nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor life or death itself, nothing can separate us from the great love we have from God through Christ Jesus our Lord. We need to realize that God's love has been lavished upon us because when we experience and know the height, depth, width, and breadth of God's love for us, it literally changes our life. Secondly, it's important for us to realize that we have become children of God. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And this is what we are. This is our identity. Oh, the world wants to give us so many identities. Identities based on position or title or degrees that have been earned. Uh, maybe identities based on behaviors or reputations that have not been so favorable to us. But God says we are the children of God. That is who we are. Years ago, John Stott, the great Anglican minister, was going to be introduced to a large crowd to be a speaker. And other speakers were being introduced with their list of accolades and all of their accomplishments and books they had written. And uh, the young man who was to introduce John Stott said, how do you want to be introduced? What information should I share? And he said, just say, here's John Stott, a sinner saved by the grace of God. And the young man did that. He got up and he said, here is John Stott, a sinner saved by the grace of God. Dr. Stott got up and said, that's the best introduction I've ever received, that I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. I'm a child of God. He told about the worst introduction. He said he was down in Florida on an occasion, and the man that introduced him got up and said, when I read this man's book, I was determined that if I had to crawl a hundred miles on my hands and knees, that I was going to be there to hear his lecture. And John Stott said, well, that was a bit much, don't you think? He said, I began my lecture, and I looked down, and he had fallen asleep. <laughs> he said, I could only surmise that he had worn himself out with all that crawling. Yeah. <laughs> we are the children of God, and that is who we are. God's love is lavished upon us. And then he goes on to say, we are becoming like Christ. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God, and this is what we are. And this is what we are becoming. We are being changed. We are being transformed. We are being formed and fashioned into the very people God wants us to be. The transformation that God has in mind is literally beyond our own imagination. He says, we are the children of God and this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are the children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Isn't, isn't that a wonderful thought? That one day we are going to be like Jesus? <laughs> I was in my very first church. Very first church. I was still in my mid-twenties. We had a, a member there named Mary Hedenall, who was a great person, and she raised children and cared for children, cared for grandchildren and foster children, and she had this little girl that came. 
Uh, I can't remember exactly how old Kimmy was at the time, but, uh, you know, about kindergarten age, first grade, something like that. And Mary came to me one day, and she was laughing. She said, uh, I was talking to Kimmy about church and Sunday school, and she said something about the preacher. Me had said something to her, and Mary said to, uh, well, Kimmy, do you like our preacher? And Kimmy, I guess about a kindergartner, said, oh, yes, he's just like Jesus. God bless you, child. <laughs> if you only, if you only knew, uh, I did learn that Kimmy paid attention to my messages. I spoke one day uh, on the devil and fighting against the works of the devil. And Mary went out in her yard, and Kimmy had a hose and had it poked down a hole in the backyard with the water going full blast. I said, "Kimmy, what are you doing?" She says, "I'm going to drown that old devil." So I mean, she <laughs> she was taking my advice. She was. She was doing spiritual warfare right there in the backyard. But would that people could say, at least in part, we are just like Jesus. There's aspects of us that are just like Jesus. We're always going to fall short in this life, but we are becoming like him. For such we are, people being transformed into his image day by day. And then finally we need to realize that our hope is to be fixed on Jesus. He is the hope that we have for the change in life and the progress that we can make. We know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is to be fixed on him. He is to be the one that we gaze upon, study, look to, contemplate, reflect upon, and turn to in our time of need. A friend of mine told me about when he was taking driver's education classes and he would drive the car and there was an instructor sitting in the car next to him. And every once in a while, the instructor, he had his own break. The instructor had a break as, as the driver had a break. The student had a break. And the instructor would step on the brake to slow down the car. He'd say, what are you doing? And the instructor would say, you're, you're, veering into, you're veering off the road or you're veering into the other lane. And uh, one day the student asked him, how do, how do you know when to step on that brake? How do you know when I'm getting off track and starting to veer? He said, I can just watch your face. When you get looking at something over here and kind of gazed over there and fixated, I know eventually you're going to start turning the car over there. And if you're looking over here and... I'm watching you, and if you're not looking straight down, if you're looking over here for a prolonged period of time, you're veering into that lane. You see, we tend to go into the direction that has captured our stare, that has captured our gaze. And it's true in life as well. If our gaze, if our stare, if our eyes are focused on the ways of the world, or things that are unpleasing to God, or situations that uh, are alien to the kingdom of God, over time our life is going to gravitate into that area, into that behavior, into that attitude, into that practice. But if our gaze, if our stare is on the face of Jesus, the life of Christ, on his ministry, his love, (coughs) his attitudes, his compassion, then over time, that very life of Jesus will more and more be reflected and demonstrated and, and become a part of our very nature of who we are. Over time, people indeed do change. And I believe that Easter can change everything because if through the risen power of Christ, a man by the name of John can be transformed from a hothead and a person with a temper management problem into one who wants to contemplate and write beautiful words and thoughts and exhortations and practical (coughs) practical advice on how we can be people of love, then know that whatever we struggle with, whatever we fight with, Whatever failing is real within us, and and with all of us, we, we have certain faults or failings or shortcomings, no matter what those are. If it's our mind and heart is fixed on him, if we 
receive and, and, and experience the, the lavish nature of his love if we give ourselves anew to the power of the resurrected Lord. Our lives can be changed through his power into the people he calls and wants us to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our altar flowers uh, are given today in honor of Mike Schmidt's birthday, given by the Schmidt and Wadley families. And Mike, thank you so much for all you do with our praise team, and happy birthday. <laughs> in a moment, I'm going to ask uh, Sherry to come and uh, share some thoughts in, in recognition of our special mothers today. But at this time, I'd like to invite Robert and Norma Ragsdale, if they would come. And I'd like to invite our lay delegate, uh, April, and our lay leader, Pat, to come forward as well. Good to see you all. God bless you. These are just a couple of our congregational officials here to welcome you. I want to invite the congregation, if you will, to turn to number 38. And we are delighted to have the Ragdales come this morning to unite with us. They come by transfer of membership from another denomination in this community. And we are just delighted to have them apart. Many of you know them from the community. But after uh, the service today, when you see, see us walking out, if you will walk out into that narthex area, I know there is others in the church that want to welcome you and greet you as well. But uh, this is a kind of a committing, uh, committal uh, uh, vows, uh, one to the other. And I would just simply ask you, um, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministry by your prayers, your gifts, your presence, your service, and your witness? And if this is your desire, would you indicate by saying, I will? And this congregation also has a pledge uh, that they come to make to you. Members of the household of God, I commend uh, Robert and Norma to your love and care. And I charge you to do all your, in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. And what is this congregation's commitment to, to this couple this morning? We give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you, and this is a little devotional book. It's called The Three Simple Rules. It's written by a deceased bishop of, of the church, a Wesleyan way of living. In the early Methodist societies, when they gathered together for about, sort of what we would call Sunday school today, they had three simple rules that guided them in their groups, and it was kind of their understanding 
of a basic philosophy of Christian life, and our congregation knows well. The three simple rules are... Oh, that was a little weak. Do no harm. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. We want to welcome you into this congregation of the United Methodist Church. God bless you. you. And again, when the service concludes, if you would come out to the Narthex, others want to give you a personal welcome. God bless you. Thank you. And Sherry, are you here? Can you come up here and in just a second say a word about mothers? I just, um, I've been kind of praying about how I wanted to approach this morning. Um, you know, this, um, this last, these last few months have been a little, a little full. Um, and earlier this week, I found myself empty. I mean, I'm not talking about running on fumes. I'm not talking about, you know, Little, you know, a little bit of gas in the tank. I had nothing. I had no patience. I had no peace. I had no energy. I had, I had nothing. And you know, I, was, I had to reflect on how, how I got there. You know, everybody has their stuff. You know, I started thinking, oh, well, I'm in school. You know, I, I teach. You know, I was winding, up, I was winding up the school year. You know, I had all these activities. We we're planning here. You know, I've got the ministry here. I've got my family. And you know, I've got school and you know, I've got all these, you know, all these things. And, but, you know, everybody has their stuff. You know, how did I get so empty? I ignored the signs and I just let myself be completely dry. And, you know, God promises that whenever we trust and we turn to him, no matter what we're going through, whether it's an illness, whether it's a struggle in marriage, whether it's a rebellious child. You know, I've, I've got eight children and we've pretty much touched all the bases. <laughs> Um, you, you worry, you, you get anxious. Even now, you know, now I'm a grandmother. I have, I have two grandbabies. You never stop being mom, no matter how old your kids are. You never stop being mom. And it can be exhausting. And sometimes you think, you know, does anybody know your heart? God knows your heart. He knows your heart. And the reason why we've had, we have special gifts for mothers today. We, I chose succulents. I know that the traditional, um, traditionally we've given roses, flowers, violets. Um, it's succulents this year because I want you, as you remind me, sometimes you forget to water, but it still blooms. Sometimes you forget to take that time. Sometimes you forget to that, take that time in your spirit, your devotional, or whatever, that time of rest, but God's got you. So in Isaiah 44, 3 through 4, it says, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. God's promises are true. They are just as true today as they were whenever this was written. So I just want to take this time to encourage you before we recognize all of our mothers and our grandmothers and our foster mothers, our stepmoms, anybody who stepped in and loved on somebody. I just want you to remember that God sees you. He will give you peace. He will water you when needed. And he will help you grow. So could we have all the moms? Um, if you're a mother, if you're a foster mom, a stepmom, if you guys could just stand. We'd just like to recognize you today. And grandmothers, everybody. Grandmothers. Grandmothers. Great grandmothers. Come on. Stand up. We just want to recognize you, but I also want to I also want to pray a blessing over you. Okay. Thank you so much for all that you do. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and sit down. That's okay. Yeah. Father God, thank you so much for these ladies who are represented here today and thank you so much for the witness for the past generations and the generations to come. God, thank you so much for the example they set. These ladies have set the bar high. But God, I am so grateful that I am in this congregation and my children are in this congregation and the children's and their children's children are all going to be blessed by their faithfulness, their work behind the scenes, and their love. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, there are. Yes. So make sure that you stop by. We've just got them on one table out there because they're kind of messy, but we have little succulent plants for you today. So make sure you see me at the table right outside whenever you leave, and we have a little gift for you. Thank you. Okay. So be sure to get your, get your flower as you leave, and we thought that was better than having the children pass them out during the worship and you're having to hold on to them and deal with them and all that type. But we want want each of you of our special moms and grandmoms today to have have a flower and a plant uh joys any special joys to be lifted up today yes uh, right here in the front i haven't seen my brother in a long time okay well wonderful uh, so good to have your brother in the area and visit i hope you have a great time together other uh joys or expressions of joy yes sir Joe? I'll never get Carla back on my granddaughter. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So, what I'm wanting to know are you teaching her or is she giving you lessons? How is this working? She won't? Okay. Well, see if you can get his stroke straightened out there a little bit. and That's great. Anybody else with a joy? Oh, yes. Uh, April? Yes. Carrie Carter with joy. Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the passing of Dale Eden, and again, that service is not this Tuesday, but a week from Tuesday. And Dale was, and I want to get this correct, 102, is that correct? 102. That is wonderful. I, I think it, was he 100 when he contracted the COVID and had to go to the hospital? And yet, amazingly, and, and you know how, what an impact the COVID had, and uh, at 100 years old, he survived COVID in the hospital, went and recovered, and went back home. So uh, you don't get to be 102 without being pretty tough, and, and he was an amazing man and lived an amazing life. So we will uh, honor his life uh, here in just about a week. Uh, we do have several in our congregation, I know, who apparently there's some kind of virus going around, kind of a stomach virus. It's, it's not COVID, but it's, and we've had several over this last week uh, battling that. So uh, we pray. And now, Trish, you say now Jay's been afflicted with that. So uh, uh, I know there are a number in our congregation who have fought that. Sally uh, got out of the hospital and uh, got strengthened to the point that as far as I know, they left on their trip Thursday. They were going up to Chicago uh, with Greg and Muriel, and uh, I don't know if they're back today or back tomorrow, but, but they were able uh, to go on their trip. Others that we need to just mention or lift up, April? Okay. Okay. Jim? Oh no. And uh, oh. I talked to him Friday, he told me they had the accident that day, and just was in the emergency for like 10 hours, and they gave him a rhythm. And today, Sunday's only he was actually in the service. He called me Wow. Okay. Okay. Pat, Heather, do you know anything about what hospital he might be in? Is that not familiar with that one? Okay. Well, we will certainly lift them up um, in our prayers. Any others that we need to mention just real quickly? Christy, have you heard anything about Jackie Robertson, how she's doing? I know she went to be with uh, David for a while. She's still, she's still there and kind of recovering, okay. And did somebody over here have one? Yes. Vivian and Reagan is on his way. He's pregnant and on his 
Okay, so pray for the military, and you say her, that's the ship, and it has been it has been has gone out to sea, with her on it. Wow. Okay, <laughs> and will and when is she due home? Okay. Well, just tell the captain of that boat wherever it is when her time's up, they need to bring her back home. So, okay, let us join in prayer. Dear God, we just thank you for the special gift of mothers, for their guidance, teaching all that they do. We just pray uh, for each of our families today, and we just uh, pray wisdom for all of our mothers, grandmothers, foster mothers, stepmothers, everyone who accepts these responsibilities. May your blessing be upon them. May you grace them. And as Sherry said, there are times we know when everyone, but especially mothers, because of the, the burden and responsibilities they carry, when they're running on empty, their, their resources are depleted. And we just pray that you would give them, lavish upon them, your love and your spirit and renew them uh, in every way we would ask in Jesus' name. Dear God, we pray for our military. We pray for all who serve and protect us. Uh, Keep them safe in their missions and their assignments and tasks. Uh, Thank you for their willingness to serve and and provide security for us. Just bless and guide them in every way. Thank you for the leaders of this community who joined for prayer this last week. And for all your people who are called to lift up this nation and this land to pray for our leaders, our president, all of our representatives, all of our local leaders. that they might listen and be guided uh, and might uh, benefit from your mighty hand leading them. Be with us as a church as we go through a time of transition, moving more now into a spring and then summer uh, activities and program, but so many opportunities for fellowship, for mission, for outreach. Just bless us in all that we do. For we ask these things in Christ's name, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our usher comes, uh, ushers come, I want to uh, just mention two things real quickly I lifted up last week. One is that coming to the end of the first quarter, we are a little bit behind in our budget. We want to bring that up to speed, especially uh, by the end of May. So as we end in, enter into the summer, uh, we will enter in on a level playing field in the summer. We don't want to enter summer being behind. If you can catch up or make a special gift to our general fund, that would be uh, wonderful. But that also our congregation has accepted a challenge an individual has offered to match between now and the end of the year up to $50,000 of any gifts given uh, towards the reduction of our building loan, which as of date is just over $90,000, about $92,000. This is a wonderful opportunity. Every dollar you give will be doubled, will be matched. We've already had one special gift of $2,000 came in last week after I made this announcement. But the window of opportunity is open now. They will match it each month. So if $10,000 come in this month, at the end of this month, they will give another ten, And that will go down. That will save interest. The next month, if 15000 come in, they will match that at the end of June. So this is a wonderful opportunity. If you're willing to do something special and extra, we appreciate it. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for your generosity and blessing in our life. Help us to always be faithful in the giving of our tithes and offerings through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Amen. Wow, Jim, thank you. What a beautiful uh, piece for us this morning. Piece of praise. And uh, this, our concluding hymn is number 445. The number is correct on this one. Uh, 445. Happy the home is when God is there and how we need uh, to be in prayer for families and homes in our community and throughout our land. Number 445. We'll sing all four verses. Each of you have a very blessed and special day. Be safe. And may the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen.